In this video, we will learn wildcards, redirection to files, and Unix pipes. Here I'm starting with a subdirectory TMP in my home folder on the training cluster. And previously, we downloaded a zip file that went back to a directory data shell. If you don't remember where to get the zip file, we ran the following command wget followed by this address, minus O, saving this file as bfiles.zip, and then when packed it with the unzip tool. When you run this, when you unpack the file, you will get data shell, directory, and a lot of files and subdirectories inside. So let's go to that data shell directory. There we're going to find a subdirectory called molecules. Let's cd in there. And there we see six files. All of them are molecule names with the .pdb extension. Let's say we want to list all molecules that start with the letter P. Of course, you could do it by hand, but that's not very efficient. So something like that. You want to use wild masks or wild cards. And these let you specify a pattern in Unix. So what I can do is I type ls p asterisk, and this means anything starting with the letter p and ending with anything else. If I want to list all files that have an extension .pdb, I will just say ls asterisk .pdb, and that will list all the files with the .pdb extension. If I want to list all files that have th instead of them, so th or the, what I can do is say ls asterisk th asterisk and that will list ethane and methane. So here we're starting with anything, then we have the letters t and h, and then we have anything at the end of the file. Let's again list all .pdb files. We have six molecules and I'm going to show you another command wc that stands for word count. If you see wc followed by file name, for example, ethane.pdb, it will return three numbers. These are the number of lines, 12, the number of words, 84, and the number of characters, 622. And by the way, if we take a look at how many bytes we have in this file, ls minus al on ethane, it's also 622 bytes. So 622 bytes and 622 characters. And that makes sense because each character usually takes a single byte. Let's do ls minus uh, wc minus l, fn the pdb, and that simply prints the number of lines in a file. If we want to print the number of lines in all .pdb files, then we will use a wild mask. This will go through all .pdb files. For each, we'll print the number of lines and then the total number of lines in all listed files. So when we run this command, the output is printed onto the screen. So this is called standard output of this command. You can also take this output and redirect it to a file. The way you do this is you type the command, then you type greater than symbol, and then you type the name of a file. So for example, we're going to say list lists.txt, actually let's say list.txt, and when we run this command, nothing is printed on the screen because all output of the previous command went into the list.txt file. Let's take everything inside this list.txt file and sort it numerically. Right now it's not sorted, as you can see, it's simply alphabetical by the name of the file. So let's sort it using the sort minus n command. So sort will sort alphabetically, whereas sort minus n will sort numerically by the value in the first column. So I'm going to say sort minus n, list.txt, and then we're going to redirect its output to the file sorted.txt. And now if we take a look at sorted.txt, we have files sorted from the shortest file to the longest file, followed by the total count. 
Okay, there is a useful command in Unix uh, that will let you print uh, any number of lines at the beginning of a file. For example, if I want to print the first three lines of the last file, sorted.txt, I will type hat minus three sorted.txt. If I want to print just the first line, then similarly I will say hat minus one sorted.txt. And by default, when you don't specify the number of lines, we just say hat sorted.txt will just print the first 10 lines of the file. Similarly, if you want to print the first, uh, the last three lines of a file, there is a command called tail. You would say tail minus three sorted.txt, and that will print the last three lines of a file. Okay, so now let's say we are interested in a file that has the smallest number of lines. So we're going to say head minus one on sorted.txt, and that will print the name methin.pdb, and the number of lines in that file is nine. Let's take a look at our history. We run three commands. I'm just going to copy and paste them in succession. So first, we run wc-l on all pdb files, and we directed the output to list.txt. Then we took this list and sorted it numerically by the value in the first column and redirected this output to sorted.txt. And finally, we took the file sorted.txt and printed the first line in this file. Effectively, what we've done with these three commands is we found the file with the smallest number of lines. You can actually take these three commands and merge them in a single, into a single command using the pipe mechanism in Unix. So let's do this. I'm going to type wc-l, count the number of lines in all .pdb files, but instead of printing this onto the screen or redirecting this output to a file, I'm going to pipe it to the next command. And the next command is sort-n. So in this case, all standard output from the first command goes into the standard input of the second command. And then we take all output from sort minus n and we pipe it into head minus one. When we run this complex command, you actually see the same output. But the benefit of this piping mechanism is you don't have three individual commands, you just have a single command. And also, you don't create any intermediate files. So when you run this last command, there are no list.txt and sorted.txt files created. This mechanism of pipes in Unix is incredibly useful, and it lets you do a lot of uh, things very quickly and very efficiently.